Oh, hello, TC. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Um, I hope you're having a great time today. Um, seeing the, oh wait, Devs on stage hasn't happened yet. But the next thing, what did you see this morning? Keynote. Was that pretty amazing? I think it pretty was. Thanks for all the good feedback. I'm liking that. I'm really feeling it. OK, so this is Hitchhiker's Guide to Dashboards. I'd like to start with a confession that this has nothing to do with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in any way. I apologize for that. Way back in May, when I was thinking about uh, this topic, I thought, I need a really catchy title to bring people in, not realizing that at a later point, the legal department would get involved and say, I can't use anything copyrighted like images and text. And, there's no way I can use anything related to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's not copyrighted up one side and down the other. So confession number one. I'll get to other confessions later. So my name's Ashley Mitchell. I'm a senior quality assurance engineer. I've been at Tableau for two years. There I am. That's my email address if you need to get a hold of me later. And I think, well, uh, this is, if you like it, it's being repeated uh, tomorrow, 11.45. If you don't like it, you know where to avoid me. Uh, and if you like dashboard-related things, there's several other talks, and you can check those in your schedule as well. So a bit about me and a bit about this talk. So I've been at Tableau for two years, but for 22 years before that, I was at Adobe Systems, right? That's a really long time. And the entire time that I was there, I worked on first PageMaker and then InDesign, which are these really high-end desktop publishing software programs. And over that time, I learned all these things about typography and fonts and text composition and layout and printing and all that kind of stuff. And so when I started at Tableau, I was still in this really like this kind of high design mindset. And when I saw dashboards, I thought, wow, that looks a lot like, like a blank page, right? Just like I'm used to in, in all this publishing software. And I thought, I wonder if I can design a magazine and dash, you know, on a dashboard. And I tried, and I, and I failed, and it was really painful, right? I don't recommend it. But during that learning period, I discovered that I could actually recreate a lot of the high-end, you know, the higher-end desktop publishing features with Tableau in dashboards using the Tableau features. And so that's what I'm going to teach you about today. I'll teach you how to design a beautiful dashboard. There's other, other talks I can, you know, tell you more about that. What I'm going to do is give you little tools so that if you ever see a design that you like or you want to make something that's a bit more of a, in a storytelling mode, you'll be able to have a picture in your head and then know exactly how to do that. So let's just get straight to it. So I've been talking a little bit like what is a beautiful dashboard? Let's just go over to Google and see what they say. And I don't know why, when I thought I just need to have some screen come up when Google Images comes up, I thought, why not monkeys and hats? I thought everybody likes monkeys and hats. So feel free to, I don't know, do that search yourself and just scroll away. OK, so if we do a search for beautiful ooh, tableau, autocorrect, save me, dashboards, this is what we get, right? And you're going to see a lot of dashboards kind of all smashed together. Like dashboards are nothing but dashboards. Kind of like Ikea came along and said, we need to pack as many dashboards as efficiently as possible to this. And this is actually a pretty good way to actually um, get users to see and understand their data. If you have like a narrow audience, let's say you're going to executives or you're going to the IT department, they need to keep track of uptime, let's say, or they need to um, you know, follow sales data. And so this is pretty good for that. But if you go to a larger audience, you know, a much broader audience, let's say you're going out to the public, either through um, Tableau Public, or you've embedded this into a, into a website. Let's say you're going um, maybe like outreach for, uh, for charities, right? Or you're informing the, pu the public about, I know, potholes being fixed and things like that. You need to have a little bit more context, right? And this is where this design type stuff comes in. So this is kind of what comes up when you have, you know, beautiful Tableau dashboards. Let's just change this search to beautiful magazine layout. And you see something really different. So what we have here are like lots of images, right? And these images aren't stuck in little boxes. They're, you know, they're all over the place. They're different shapes. There's different colors. They go out all the way to the edge of the page. You see color being used in this interesting way to tie in different elements across pages and across an entire story, an entire document. And they even have, um, let's see, 
I mean, these have just really creative uses of, of text. Like everything's kind of being all tied together and lots and lots of white space. And so another little confession perhaps is that when I first did this search on beautiful magazine layouts, the first thing I saw in the top left corner was this picture, picture of Idris Elba and I thought, oh no, right? Everybody's eyes gonna immediately go to that and if we don't take some time getting our Idris yayas out, right, you aren't gonna hear another single word I say this entire hour. So <laughs> there you go, you're welcome, right? And while we're looking at this, we might as well say what makes this a magazine layout and like how is it beautiful besides the obvious? Um, and so like on the right, left-hand side, sorry, I'm getting all turned around. The left-hand side, you have this, this really beautiful image and it goes all the way out to the edge of the page, right? It's not constrained in any way. Then over here on the, on the left-hand side, you've got all this white space, right? You're just cramming data into every place. Um, and then here we've got some really dark, tight text juxtaposed against this really airy, light text. And you can see that the top word, Idris, has been given a little bit of color, so it ties in with this kind of a sepia tone to the, from the image on the other side. And down here to the right, this is called a drop cap. Let me just zoom in a bit for you. And the drop cap is just an initial character that's made larger with the other set text offset. And in this case, they even put like a, a colored background to give a little bit of a contrast and to tie it in with the rest of the document, I mean, with the rest of the page. And you can also see this really interesting kind of this white, little white river going through there. And then at the bottom, a narrow column becomes a wide column. And so I thought, is this something that we can do in Tableau? Like, like could we actually do this, right? And the answer is, heck yeah, we can, right? So here on, on the side, uh, the image, this is my own 1986 Dove Blue Volkswagen Vanagon, which totally rocks in every way. Um, it does, like I can't beat an old lady through a stoplight, but it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> and, okay, and so, and so just to kind of demystify this a little bit, um, over on, like this is just an image in a floating container, right? You, you've probably done this yourself. Over here, when I get to the text, I just went to the internet, found a, found a font that I liked, downloaded it. Um, I colored it blue to match this, to match the van on the right-hand side. Down here, when I get to the drop cap, it's, it's, it's not mysterious, it's really simple, right? I've got one text frame with a large white letter T with a blue background to tie it in again with the text on the van. And then here, this is just another text frame a text container that has spaces of the first two lines to give a little bit of offset to give that initial drop cap some room. And then when it, this text looks like it's actually a wide narrow column going to a wide one, it's just two different columns, right? And so while, let me just undo a little bit, make it mm, nice. Um, it looks, it could be kind of like, it's kind of magical, but it's really just smoke and mirrors. You know, like when you're in Vegas, you see some really cool things, you look behind it and it's really very simple. And so what we're gonna do over the next, you know, 45 minutes or so, is that we're gonna, I'm gonna give you the little tools to be able to look at a design, see like, oh, how can I do that inside Tableau? And we're gonna do some little walkthroughs. It'll be kind of informative. But we don't wanna do magazines, right? We wanna do Tableau dashboards. So let's just look real quickly back on the internet and see what, can, what is possible, what's being done out there. So first I'm gonna, show us, um, there's a gentleman in England named Johnny Walker, and th that's his real name, see it's right there. It's not like a euphemism for like, you know, like, oh, I was talking to Johnny Walker last night and I've got a headache this morning, <laughs> right? And so if you look down here, like look at all these really cool visualizations he's done. These are all dashboards. And one, one that's really nice is this one on crocodiles. See, there's, there's all these maps in there. It's all, kind of, it's all kind of mixed in. There's graphics, these really nice, you know, masked images, and we'll talk about what masking means. There's little charts, there's graphs. I mean, it's really pretty amazing. It's kind of hard to believe that this is done in, in Tableau. I'll show you one more that um, Johnny also did. This is, this is one for Clay Square. It's a nature reserve in the north coast of, of England. And it's really hard to believe when you look at this that this is actually done in Tableau. These really gorgeous kind of watercolor images. There's this interesting text. And right in the middle, there's some Tableau, um, there's some Tableau charts go down, again, there's these you know, other really nice graphics, bar charts again that give you some information, maps down here that let you filter. Oh. Okay, now that's telling me I should go back to Tableau and let's just start this going. So to show us kind of what we're gonna be able to do, I 
no, no, too fast, no, don't, shh, nobody saw that. So here's the dashboard, just a, a quick sample one. And you're gonna see some things on here that aren't really what you normally see. A lot of text, there's these images kind of hanging off the bottom. I do have a, a chart in here of lost pets, right? So if you really wanna see what, if you wanna get pet idea names, look at that. There's like Garfield, Gemini, there's somebody over in Ballard named their cat Janet. I don't know who does that, but I, I kinda wanna meet these people. Um, right, so let, let's just jump right into it and see how we can do some of the things that you see, see on this uh, dashboard right here. We'll start off with drop caps. On this right-hand side, I've made a couple examples. Up here, I've got this, a little skinny font that's that colored blue. Here, I've got a white large letter L with a gray background behind it to give it some contrast. A little farther down, I've just made a giant red fancy L. And then lastly, down here, I have, basically, it's, it's called a drop shadow. We have a darker version behind it, an offset. Kind of gives it a, like a fake shadow. So let's see how I did this. It's really very simple. I'll double click this. I'm gonna get rid of that first letter and just click OK. Because what I want to do down here, when I should tell you that almost everything we're gonna be doing in this next hour has to do with floating containers. Because that gives us a lot more freedom about where to position things, where to size things, how to layer them front to back. So we want to make sure that it's floating. And then I'll just drag out a text frame. I need to put in that letter L that I took out before. I will select it, make it kind of big. I'm gonna make it a little bit beefier because I think that's gonna look nice, right? And there I go. And so I've got this nice letter L. And so what I do, I just need to position it right where I want to. And now I'm gonna do my second confession. So I'm not really very good at reading schedules. And so in my head until just recently, I kind of thought the devs on stage meeting was gonna be yesterday. And so I built some features into my, into my demo that actually reference some of the features that are gonna be done in about an hour, right? So I'm not sure what I should do, right? Should I show you this kind of cool new feature? Or should I just like, I like your attitude. Like, at some point, like Adam Zalipsky, the CEO, is like my boss, and he pays my, he pays my salary. But then I was thinking a little bit more, and it's like, well, who pays his salary? And I realized, like, it's all of you, right? You're, you're his boss, right? So if you're his boss and you want me to do it, I should probably do it, right? But so this is like, shh, right? Like, this doesn't happen for an hour. Just keep, you know, zip it up and throw away the key. So uh, a little bit nervous up here. Um, so, you know how when you're working on a dashboard, anytime you start like kind of get re getting really delicate and like the mouse gets like super sensitive somehow and you just can't get things? Okay, so what we can do now, or soon, this will come, come out sometime in 2008. Ah, I feel like I broke a law right when I said that. Um, you can use the arrow keys to, to nudge things around on your, on, your, uh, on your dashboard. I heard a yes out there. Yes, it's, it is, it's really, it's so tiny, look. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Oh, nice, nudge, nudge, nudge. Hold on the shift key, so if you nudge, it moves it by one pixel. If you hold on the shift key, it moves it by 10 pixels, right? And so, I mean, this kind of saved my life when I was doing all these, because it's, it's so painful to have to like drag these things around. So, shh, right? Okay, so now I have this nice drop cap, this letter L. To actually go and change the rest of the text, I'm gonna double click this and just type in I'm gonna hit a number of spaces, like maybe that many, and I'll click OK, right? And that looks pretty good. So now what I want to do, I need to put some spaces on the second line. But since we, we only honor space at the beginning of a paragraph, I need to see where this, par this first line ends, which is over here, hit a return, and then just hit the same number of spaces, like that. And so that's it, like that's all you have to do. It's two tech containers, one with a bigger, big letter and the other with just some spaces, right? So this is just the beginning point. Like if you just wanna start doing this and then get a little bit more creative on the right-hand side, it's a nice way to kind of make your text a little bit fancier. And down here, um, I mentioned we have a drop shadow. It's super simple. I'm gonna go, that's the next thing we're gonna look at. So I've got two, Im I've got an image here and I have some text. And these little guys, if you're wondering about them, so I was up on a business trip up to Vancouver, and I was, you know, it was the first night there, and I was, um, I was out at this bar just kind of having dinner by myself, and I thought, I don't want to eat, <laughs> like I don't want to eat by myself, and so I always bring like a little package of um, googly eyes with me, 
So I thought, you know what? I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna make a couple friends here. And so I, so I sat there and I had my drink and I was eating my dinner, I had these little googly-eyed guys. And um, yeah, you know what? I've never regretted carrying googly eyes with me. So I, I highly recommend it. Okay, and so if I wanna make a drop, a drop shadow behind this image, this is just a big rectangle, right? So I'm gonna go down here again, right down there, and make a floating blank container. Switch out to layout, give it a black fill, right? And so now what I can do, I just need to position it. If I was doing this for real, I would make it exactly the right, you know, exactly the same size as the image. Drag it down there. Then I want to go down to the drop down menu, floating order, send it all the way to the back. You know, I've got a mouse here. I should use that mouse. And then I just need to nudge it over a little bit. And with my nifty little arrow keys, it's really simple. And so at that point, now I've, oh, I should have, oh, now I need to show you another feature. And you're my boss, right? So, eesh, guys, really? Okay, you want me to show you another feature? So in addition to be able to like kind of move things around, I, oh, I shouldn't be doing this, but, it's okay, because you're my boss. So sometimes things are kind of tucked behind other objects, or they're all kind of scattered all over. You have like 20 or 30. So now when you have an item selected on your dashboard, you get to hit the tab key, and it'll switch around. It'll change your selection all around. Right, so I just need to click around until I get the right one, and there I go. I've got this nice little drop shadow. It's not exactly even, but for purposes of demonstration, you get it. And now I've got this, if I to do text, it's a little bit different. Right? I select, you know, right here, there's plenty of contrast. I can read this just fine. But if I were to move this over an image, let's say, there's not enough, like, difference between the text and that wood behind it. So to make a drop shadow on text, just double click this. I'm gonna cop, select it all and copy it. Click OK. Come back out here and make another floating text container. Oh, that's not what I did. Make another floating text container. Just paste it in, select it, and make it black. Right? And at this point, it's just what we were doing before. I drag it around to where it's kind of close to what I want. In this case, I'll just move it backward. And there I go. I just have a really simple drop shadow. You don't want to overuse this. You don't want to do like an entire te you know, paragraph worth of text, but it's a nice way to kind of give a little bit of punch or give a little bit of like kind of specialness you know, to a word or a graphic. And so I've been talking about images. Like it's really important to have images to really kind of make it stand out. So where do you actually get these images? They don't just like, they aren't just lying around on your hard drive. So, so there's a couple ways. Let's see. You could, right? If you're a really good photographer, right? <laughs> Look at that. Like that's awesome, I totally, I get it, it's awesome. But let's say you aren't a great photographer, right? Well, what happens if, like you might be a really good artist, right? Look at that. Right? So you might just be this like, amazing artist. But not everybody has the luxury of being both a really talented photographer and an amazing artist. Right? So what do you do? It turns out there's a lot of images on the internet. They're called stock photos. And I'm going to show you a couple places where you can find them. There's kind of two types of stock photos. One, where you have to pay for it, right? because there's some professional artist or photographer who's created it. And it's their property, and you need to, in some way, compensate them. So I've, I've linked a couple, um, let's see. Oh, and so I just wanna say before I forget that so in order, like I'm used to like, I was also an Adobe trainer for a couple of years and I was used to having like eight people for two days straight and I could just go into all the why and the why behind the how, but I don't really get to do that in just an hour. So while I'm going kind of fast on these things, that's kind of glossing over and giving you a first taste of what you can do. I'll actually be putting up in a week or two on Tableau Public individual workbooks that actually cover all these topics. I go into a lot more detail and actually give you, um, I don't know, a lot more of, of, the, of the why behind the how. So, so over here we've got, let's say, like Adobe and iStock and Shutterfly. These are all really good places where you can get um, where you can get uh, stock photos. And if you've never used one of these sites before, you can just type in something that you want to have in your, you know, in your viz, like wetlands. These are awesome, right? And so to get one, you just double click it, and it'll say, oh look, look at that. It's gonna cost me 33 bucks. If it's worth it, fine, I can download it. There's all different types of contracts you can make. Um, but 
what you really want is to have these high quality images. You want them to be legal and you want them to be free, right? This is this trifecta of like images. And it turns out there's a lot of websites that actually give you access to these high quality, legal and free um, stock images. And so again, like I'll be able to, I'll provide some of these, you know, on, the, uh, on my workbooks that I put up on the, on the Tableau public. But you can just see like there's a lot of their stock snap and some of them are actually front ends to pay services like, oh, here's a couple of free ones to get you hooked on us. And others are just entirely free. Um, and some are specialized about food. There's even, you know, just, you know, crazy ones, more nature focused, things like that. And so let's say like, here's a really nice one, Gratisography. And it's a lot like the other ones, right? In this case, they have some really funky images. Let's say I want to do a search for, I want to get a, something for bikes. I can just do type in bike, it'll do a search. Oh look, I've got all these really cool, you know, bike pictures, right? I don't know how much they paid that guy for that Photoshop. I hope he just had to do it once, right? But to download this, I just go click, click. Oh look, and it downloaded. Yep, there it goes, it downloaded. Oh, I guess I just clicked once, now I've got two of them. And there may be some copyright information that they ask you to provide, but most times these are just free. You should actually um, look about, um, how to actually uh, provide, oh, and, oops, sorry, how to actually um, provide uh, references if they actually ask for that. And so there you go, it's on my hard drive, you can use it. Oh, and before I leave there, so, and the same thing kind of applies to fonts. Remember how I, I was on that page and I said oh, I downloaded a, a font from the internet? There's the same kind of thing. You can go to like these professional sites, like here's one that's set up by Adobe. Um, who has all these different foundries, right? And this guy, Frere Jones, Tobias Frere Jones, he's the one who actually created our new Tableau font that we created a couple of years ago. Dalton Mogg, he's this crazy Swiss guy who did the new Kindle fonts, you know, several years before that. And so, into see these font guys kind of specialize in different things. You can download these, but you're gonna have to pay for them. Might be kind of hard to see, but, you know, 60 bucks. Is it worth it? Maybe it is. But there's also places you can get free fonts but kind of unlike uh, the stock photos, you really gotta, I mean, you're getting what you pay for. Sometimes you have a nice font, and sometimes you get something that's really kind of cheapo. But here, for example, this is 1,001 free fonts. And you can see over here, this one says free for download. This one says download, or you can also buy a commercial license. You know, and so sometimes you're gonna get good fonts and sometimes not. You just need to check them out a little bit. So if I were to click on this, you can see that, oh look, I've got all these characters, I've got some punctuation, I've got numbers, but really nothing else, right? For the free ones, you aren't gonna get like umlaut use, S sets, you know, fancy stuff. So a little bit buyer beware. But let's say, one, and since, has, how many people have actually downloaded fonts before and actually installed them? Okay, that's a pretty good number. I trust you know how to do what you're doing. But what if you don't? Okay, I'm gonna download this one, right? Because it might seem a little bit scary to download something. What? You know what, too bad, I'm not gonna show you that. I'm gonna keep on going with cool features in Tableau. Basically you download it, you double click it, it's installed, you're done. Okay, I think that was a pretty good summary of it. Okay, so let's go back now and look at that first dashboard, right? So now all of a sudden you see this, this big W. Well, how do you do that? Right, you know how to do that now. This little drop shadow that's going on here, that's pretty simple, you know, this little dog guy. I just, you know, I've, I went online and I found a, a nice free stock photo of dogs, right? So everything you do on this page right here, like everything on this, you can totally do it, right? You've, you're now masters at doing whatever's on this page. Let's look at another example. So in this case, I've, I've added, you know, a few more features. And you can look around. It's like, oh, there's some highlighting going on there. There's this blend from white to this image. Like kind of, you know, there's these fonts going on. I've got little robots kind of peeking out there. So, so how do they do this? Well, good thing you asked, because I'm gonna tell you. So I'm gonna start off with something that seems kind of boring, but it's really important when you wanna keep, bring users in and actually keep them reading. And that's to do with paragraphs. So it's kind of, well, on the left-hand side here, right there, this is how, you, how text would just show up in Tableau if you're just to type it. Type some text, hit return, type some text, hit return, right? It's really, really difficult for users to know like where a paragraph starts and where it ends. And when it's something like that, it kind of turns users off, right? They, it, it's this confusing mass of text and 
it, it just kind of drives them away. Or they, they read part of it and it's uncomfortable and they bail. So I'm going to show you really quickly a few different strategies for this. They're going to come as no surprise, a couple of them. First way, I'm just going to put like the same number of spaces at the beginning of each paragraph. Right? A lot of programs like Microsoft Word and almost everybody else has a special feature called first line indent. Or you can use a tab key. Tableau doesn't support those right now. But we can just type in the same number of spaces. And so now you can see it's really clear to a reader where the paragraphs start. And you'll notice that I didn't put any indent in the first paragraph at, at the top of this column. Because traditionally in publishing, well, the whole point of first line indent is to tell people where the paragraph starts. There's no question where this paragraph starts at the very top. So try to avoid doing that. The second way, I'll just double click this, is just to you know, put in a, a line return at the end to actually provide spacing between paragraphs. And so again, it's really unambiguous where the paragraphs begin and end. But I have a little problem with this in that when you have too much space between paragraphs, it's not clear to the user if they're all one big continuous story or if they're three independent, you know, like individual unrelated topics. So to kind of ease that issue, if you go into, back into edit your text, hit a space, right, you need something to select. So I'm, I'm in this empty, empty lineup there. I'll change the point size, let's say to six. Do the same thing down here on this other line. Okay. Now it tightened up a little bit. Personally, I like to get it even tighter, but right now we have a limitation in Tableau that you can't make a line any shorter than six point. So. Next up. So the third thing I'm going to show you doesn't have to do with anything about spaces or spacing, but it actually ha has to do with formatting. So I'm just going to select the first line of text. Right? I can see over here that it ends with this word. I kind of wish I would have chosen English so I could pronounce it. Um, and I'm just going to, oh, let me just double click this, make that bold, and I'll just do the same for the following lines. Right? The first, oh, not that. I'll make these bold. Right? I, I'm making a bold, but you could make it red, you could make it all caps, you could make it a different font, just something to format it so that it looks different. And so you can see now, it's, again, it's unambiguous, like where the paragraphs start and where they end. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do here, and you might have di individual preferences, like what might look best like in, according to your design. And so you can just pick and choose whichever one of these you like. And now it's going to be, in, I'll switch to another topic that doesn't seem interesting, but I find it interesting that I'm the one who's talking, it has to do with emphasis. Like sometimes you want to emphasize a word or a sentence or just a phrase because there's something special about it. It needs to be called out. So just, you know, the first couple are going to be pretty obvious. I can select a word, make it bold, select a different word, like, oop, make it italic, maybe make one underlined. I can also make one a different color, right? I'll make it orange, not a good color. Right? And you can see that these all now kind of stand out a little bit differently. So there's one more way I'm going to show you. It doesn't have to do with formatting at all. It's actually providing shading behind the word that you want. And so this is you know, pretty straightforward. Again, I'm going to our friend, blank container, pull it out, go to layout, give it some type of color like this ooh, really bright yellow. And so now I just want to position it where I need it, resize it, right? And again, I'll go to the flyout menu from this container, and send it to back. Right? And so now I have these you know, many different ways that I can provide you know, emphasis. But you should notice that some of them are more apparent than others. Like if somebody's hard of seeing, bold really stands out well, right? But italic isn't quite as, quite as punchy. So if you care about an audience or if you're targeting an audience that might not have as good a vision and you're trying to emphasize something, make it one of these that stands out a little bit more. And when it comes to color, like that, Oh, I, I thought I could select it out there. Um, people are colorblind, you know? A lot more guys than you think are colorblind. And so color's not always gonna be, you know, the best option for you. So just some options there. One more item to do having to do with text, and it's kind of my pet peeve, and it has to do with lists. Most of the time, I see this all the time, somebody will make a list like this. They type one, you know, period space, two period space, three period space. And so what happens? Well, technically, you've met the conditions, right? This is a numbered list. It's really hard for them to, one, tell that they're different topics, and two, to actually see the number, because it just kind of blends into the rest of the text. But there's a really nice, quick way to actually kind of make this better. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull out a new text container, 
right? And in here, this is where I'm going to put all my numbers, like one period return, two period return, three period. Okay, now I've got these two, uh, what I should have done, I'm going to select all this text and right align it. You'll see why in a second. So now what happens, I just drag it over here, make it kind of as big as I want. And I've got my numbers on one side, on the other, and I just need to hit a couple returns in between so that, so that they line up. Right? I mean, need to adjust it, one more. But now it's really clear, like which is the numbered list, right? I don't know if you have a preference, I certainly do. But I think if people come along and they say, I wonder where the numbered list is, it's gonna be pretty easy on the right. But the drawback here is that if I start moving things around, or if I start resizing things, right, I've gotta drag these around, I have to put new, new returns. It's a little bit of a hassle, but there's a nice quick solution for this. Down here, we haven't used these yet, but we have these horizontal layout containers, and layout containers are kind of cool. So I'll drag one out. And when I drag one out, you can see it says hold down shift to drop floating objects in this container. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna select the first one, the number, hold down the shift and drag it in. Then I'll click the body text, or just the text, hold down shift to drag it in. And you can see that I can drop it in a lot of different places. If I drop it over on the right-hand side, now they're right next to each other, right? And when I have something you know, in the containers, I can put my cursor over where, they're, um, where they meet, and I can adjust it. In this case, I'm gonna jam it all the way over to the left. And you'll notice that when I select these individual, you know, these contained items, I can't, actually, I can't actually move them around and I can't resize them. That's because these contained objects aren't really on the page anymore. They're like in this little container world. That's all they know. So what I need to do is kind of go up a level and select what, what contains it. The old, I don't know, the old boring way to do it is this. You can click on the drop down and choose select layout container. Great, now I can move these around, I can resize them, and they kind of resize together. It's kind of handy, but let me show you a nice little trick to kind of speed things up a little bit. When I have an item selected that's contained, you can see that it's gray. The selection is gray, right? Hold on to that thought for a second. And so now, instead of actually clicking on the drop down, what I can do, I just need to like double click on that little, that little drag bar at the top. I go click, click. Ooh, that's kind of cool. If I want to select an individual item, I can just click on them. If I want to select up a level, just double click, and now I can drag them around. And so the benefit is that you just need to drag everything around at once, and it follows itself. If I make things you know, taller and shorter, oh, it wasn't selected. You know, it all kind of works. And in this case, again, it would just happen to work. Right? If things get out of sync, again, I just need to go in, hit some returns. Okay. So there's a, a really quick, nice way to make really good looking, um, really good looking uh, uh, lists. One more, let's get off text a little bit. We're gonna go to cropping. Sometimes you have an image you really like, but you don't want the entire thing. Of course, you can go out to another program, just kind of cut out the part you want. But if you have a really clean, simple background, you know what? quick and dirty, right? You just pull out a blank container, go to layout, give it the same color as the background. There you go, nobody's the wiser, right? <laughs> right, smoke and mirrors. Okay, so it's not much of a trick, but you know, it gets the job done. Let's go back and look at that example now. Ah, see, so we've got this nice little list over here. We have this, this background highlighting. You know how to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I just like these robots, it's not really a trick, but it's just an emoji, right? I just copied an emoji out of somewhere and for some reason it just happened to work. And I just kind of tucked them behind. I just kind of used, you know, floating front to back. I moved them behind the text. Now they're kind of peeking out, um, as robots do. Um, and, and, and so while you see like this image here that's kind of fading from white to, white to like the image, that's actually called a soft crop. I haven't showed you how to do it yet, but I'm going to pretty soon. If I wanted to crop it you know, nice and blunt, I could have just put the box over it. But let's keep on moving. Let's see, what time is it? 4.04. Oh, I only have like 20 minutes left. Okay, so here's the last example I'm gonna show you. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Right? We've got this nice little chart here about you know, what you all care about, British Columbia lumber sales in the last you know, 26 years. Keeps me up at night. Um, okay, and we've got some nice little things going on. So. Next I'm gonna tell you is all about the eyedropper tool. 
The eyedropper tool is a Mac only feature. Sorry, Windows folks. It's because it's provided by the operating system. So here I've got Oktoberfest. Like, it's kind of October now. We've got this German flag next to it for obvious reasons. But to kind of make, tie these things in a little bit better, I want to give, I want to kind of color this text to be black, red, and yellow, the colors of the German flag. The way I would do that, I would just go into here, you know, double click my text. I could select, let's say, I mean, nowhere to break this word. There, Octo. And I could go, in, if, go into my edit colors. If none of these are really the right color, like I could make it yellow, right? But, oh, that doesn't match. That doesn't match. That's not even close, right? So what I can do, I can go into colors. I can click on more. Right? I can use these sliders and do all types of crazy stuff and try to get close. But look down here on the Mac. We have a little eyedropper. I can click on the eyedropper. And I can hover like over anywhere on my screen. I can suck up a color. Click, I got yellow. Okay, and now I can select some more text. Oh my, that's, you know what? I like it. <laughs> Happy Burfoctofest. Um, okay, and so, so I have that nice yellow. I'm gonna go to more colors, click on eyedropper. There, I've got the red, right? And that's, that's so awesome. Okay, and so I have some, I have some and so, but these colors I just, I just kind of sucked up. They're actually now part of my little library of colors. And so I have some boxes down here, some blank containers. And if I want to, I can just, let's see, make this one black. The next one I'll make, what do we need? We need red, like the same red that came out, and the same yellow, right? So all of a sudden I can start tying, oh, is that the right one? I don't think so. I'm backing away, I'm going on. Why did that stick? We don't know. Okay, let's say it's perfect. Mm. Okay, so the eyedropper, really cool, because it lets you suck colors out of, your, out of your viz from anywhere. I can go on my worksheets and apply them to charts, onto, you know, onto color legends, onto bars and lines. It really kind of, it, it's kind of a, a really nice thing. When things match exactly, you know, it kind of takes it up a level. We're gonna talk about transparency next. Transparency is pretty straightforward. You've probably all used it. So I've got this yellow box here, right? Nothing fancy about it. And a lot of people, if they want a color that's bright but not that bright, they'll actually go into their, their little color panel, choose a color they want, and then use the slider down here, this, this opacity slider, right? And make it a little bit more, you know, more, less opaque, more transparent, right? And this is great when you're on a white background because it just looks lighter. But anytime it's over colored background, then you're gonna start getting some mixing. Maybe that's what you want, but probably not, right? But you can actually use this as a kind of a cool way to, um, in the same way that it's used to make a color lighter, I can make this whole image lighter over here on the left. Oh, and if you don't know, this is Ashley Jenkins. He's my little buddy. And this on the right, that's Mark the Dumb Frog. And they travel with me everywhere. They're my little buddies. Um, um, oh. oh, and so, what do I want to do? So in some you'll have an image that's a little bit too bright. Like you might want to as a background to your viz or to your dashboard, but it's kind of, it's competing with the content that's on top of it. So the a nice little trick to get around that. You create, um, you create a blank container, give it a fill of white, right? And if I give it some type of transparency, when I move it over an image, if, if I were to move it over the entire image like this, all of a sudden, the image isn't quite so bright, right? I've kind of toned it down a little bit. And if I want to make it a little lighter, I just up the opacity, right? If I want to make it really bright, that. So this is kind of a way to like control the, control the brightness of an image that's in your, um, that's in your, in your, where are we, dashboard. Okay, now we've always seen these really cool images. Like a lot, all these images so far have been in boxes, right? They're all rectangles. What's really cool, like you saw that, that dog at the beginning, he didn't actually have a big background behind him and that's called masking. Masking is when you actually have some transparency inside your image. And so we're gonna kind of look at that really quickly. Unfortunately, you can't do anything about this inside Tableau. There's no way for us to selectively choose which parts of my image are transparent and which aren't. You're gonna have to use them, either get them, let's say from, they might be part of your stock photo image, or you have to go to, if you know how to use Photoshop or something like that, you can make your own masks. But, so let's say you're doing something about the Chestnut Brothers Bar and Grill, right? So here we are. Let's get an image in there. 
or the Chestnut Brothers? Nope. Let's sort by name. Why is Creeper coming up? That's not a good, that's not good. Okay, you know what? I'm using Creeper for now, just because you've already seen it. So, so Ash, Ashley Jenkins is known to kind of like the ladies, right? But he's a little bit creepy. This is my wife and I when we were camping up in Oregon. And um, she hates this little puppet so much, she wouldn't believe it. And I don't know why, but man, I mean, he's awesome. Okay, somebody set up at top. Chestnut Brothers. Oh, I got so many of them. So here we are, we have this Chestnut Brothers, right? They're going to start their own bar and grill. I know that we kind of veered off a little bit, like who's going to do this? Like, oh, I'm making menus in Tableau now. But, but, but I love this picture so much. So here we have the Chestnut Brothers, right? It's kind of awesome. But how much more awesome would it be if we actually had just the Chestnut Brothers, right? They're just kind of hanging out there, like, hey, come to our, uh, come to our thing, right? Or let's say, right, let's say you'd actually went out to, you know, you're in Las Vegas now, and you just bought a $15, you know, $15 breakfast of pancakes, and you want to show everybody, right? Like, like, here, like here's your $15 pancakes, right? And so if you actually had it masked, you could have this nice little, see how that, this, the, plate, the plate kind of, uh, you have that arc behind there? Like, that's kind of cool, right? It's a little bit better than if it was just like a rectangle. Let me just show you what it would look like if it had been a rectangle. Where are those? Right? I mean, that's an okay, right? That's an okay picture. But it's a little bit pizzazzier when you have that, that circle on there. So we're going to talk one more thing before I go back to that to the dashboard I showed you, and that's with transparency and masking. The, trans the masking I've shown you so far has 100%, right, it's either totally opaque or totally transparent. But with masks, you can actually make them shade anywhere between 100% opaque and 100% transparent. And that opens up a lot of different kind of cool little design options, right? So let me just open up my image folder again. Ooh, go into this other folder. And so, so what happens, like if you make a box, but the, the area that you cut out is in the shape of text, right? So that's, you know, I can just kind of move this all around and it's, you're just gonna see the image behind it, right? So kind of, that opens up some possibilities. And then when I was also playing this, because I can actually shade, you know, like from opaque to transparent, what if I were to make something that was, you know, totally opaque on one side and totally transparent on the other? And I, you know, now I can place this over images and instead of having it be the same, you know, lighter color across the board, I can just have a kind of shading. And remember when I went back, let's see, we'll go back to this, uh, this second example, this robot. Let me just move some things. Oh no, you know what? I didn't want that anyway. So this robot here, look, I just have this image, right? That's, that's overlaying it. It's just this transparency. So let me go back over here to this. And so I can vary how much this blends from opaque to transparent. And so if I, if I set up different numbers of these, right, I can start, instead of having to specialize and make special versions of all my images, if I have a whole bunch of these just to pick and choose from, I can place any image that I want, and I can, depending on which one that I place over it, I can just give it, you know, this different blend. And it doesn't have to just be shading in one direction to another. It can also be, oh, let's say in circles, right? I can have this nice little vignette. And if I don't like how much that kind of blends, I can make another one. Oh, not that at all. I can um, do a different one, where it's like it's, it's more transparent in the middle. So is this, I, we can't actually do this like in Tableau, you need to do it outside. But are these, this something useful that you guys would actually use? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I heard one yes, and that's all I need. <laughs> so remember how I told you that I was going to put these, uh, work, these uh, workbooks up on Tableau Public that you can download and kind of learn how to do these things in a little bit more depth? Well, I'll do the same thing. I'll, I plan on making like a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of these, like shading left to right, right to left, from white to transparent, from black to transparent, circles and squares and all those things. And I'll put them up into a workbook so that you can all get to them. And then you can download it. But then it's like, well, how are you gonna actually pull those images out and use them yourself? And I'm gonna show you a nice little trick. And this is not a trick that'll get me fired. Like everybody kind of knows about this. This is something that people do. So I'm just gonna make a quick duplicate. 
And do you call these, we call these, internally we call these Twibix files, right? Is that just kind of a silly thing to say? These TWBX, we just call them Twibixes. Turns out these Twibix files are really just zip files with a different extension. So, if I rename this to be .zip, yep, thank you. I can then double click it. You can do this on Mac or Windows. If I double click it, the operating system will open it up like it's a zip file. And inside the zip file is an image folder. And here are all the images, right? And we aren't the only people to do this. Adobe does it. Um, your PowerPoint presentations are zip files like this. You just need to change the extension to zip. And so when I put, this, um, when I put these dashboards up there, when you download it, just change the extension to zip. You can open it up. You get access to like all the images in there. If you want the Chestnut Brothers, go for it, right? Um, so let's go back to Tableau, and we're going to see how, um, look at this, uh, this last example. And so now what you're looking at, you can actually probably look at this and say, like, oh, I know how we did that. Right? This green color that's going on up here, I just used the eyedropper and pulled out some of these, the greens out of this um, image. This image here, it's, um, it just has a mask, right? I drag it around. Right? I mean, I don't, rec I, I don't recommend like covering up too much of your images or too much of your charts with images. It tends to make them not very useful. But in this case, it just a few little bits poked up. And so masking just kind of makes it a little bit kind of, I don't know, kind of classy, a little higher end. Kind of text takes it out of the common, like all my images are in a box, right? And then down here, you can probably guess, this is just another mask where I have, you know, an image that has, you know, the text cut out. Anywhere I drag it around, it's going to take on you know, take on that color. So let's see what we have to do. Anybody have any questions? I could. I may have to. I'd have to switch to a different program to do it. No, no, we can't do that. Unfortunately, like Tableau, just. I mean, it's totally fine. It's not an image editing program. Like. It, it, it's, the strengths are definitely in doing visualizations and, and charts and things. Um, but it sounds like I should probably want to make a workbook, maybe throw up a couple of tutorials on some common, maybe graphic programs where you can do this in it, like Photoshop. I don't know how many people have access to Photoshop, but I can make some tutorials in different applications. So you aren't just stuck wanting, you'll actually be able to create some things yourself. Um, so I have remarkably finished my talk. I didn't think I did. My story was like three hours long. Is, um, so, well, I'm, I know that the devs on stage is going to be starting pretty soon at 5.15, right? So if people want to leave, and if people are leaving, you just know that, you know, Idris Elba is up on the screen now. And if, if you wanted to stay, I mean, but if not, it kind of hurts. OK, so um, if anybody wants to stay around, I will take some questions if you want to come up here, because we don't have any microphones to ask questions. Or if you want, you can just leave and go to Devs on stage first, get some coffee or something before you um, uh, take off. And uh, thanks very much. I appreciated it.